Hey, folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play RimWorld. No mods, no expansions. So lovely. I will note, um, even if you have royalty and ideology, you can play with the, the those expansions enabled and therefore get the extra content, but you can play without the ideology system actually active, um, and you can also ignore the royalty thing um, and not, uh, not do... You know, not get honor and ignore the side cast. Like, it's totally fine. You can play effectively a vanilla experience without those things, but then you get, you know, some extra furniture and bits and pieces. And that's, you know, kind of neat. The expansions are awesome, by the way. If I hadn't made that clear before, the expansions to this game really are quite cool. Ideology in particular opens up so much new stuff that, uh, yeah, so many new play styles and things. It's quite exciting. Okay, I'm not really in a hurry to research Wake Up Production or Gojuice. The base drug production is going to be okay. Um, we can now research new things that we weren't able to research before because we do have the high-tech research bench in place. Now, there are still going to be a few things that we can't research until we get the multi-analyzer. Often, I do prioritize getting this pretty quickly after microelectronics because, first of all, the microanalyzer increases your research rate. So the earlier you get it, the more benefit you get out of that. And some things are locked behind it. In particular, fabrication gives us the ability to create our own components and eliminates like a possibility of just running out of components like immediately. And that to me is terrifying. Um, I would like to be able to maybe make our own medicine production, although we'd have to be able to build new, buy neutromine for that. Hospital beds gives us a much better hospital. Um, deep drilling with the ground penetrating radar does give us the ability to get a effectively infinite supply of base metals, which is really handy. Uh, okay, we, we needed microelectronics for precision rifling. Yeah, 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 uh, which gives us the assault rifle. But we're going to try to make do without it for now. Um, yeah, I think I'm actually okay with doing the multi-analyzer possibly directly into fabrication job. It's a, they're, you know, fairly expensive techs, but they'll work out okay. All right, Berg just completed work on their own bedroom over here, which is nice. I mean, it is a barracks, and they won't be pleased about it. Like, we check over here, awful barracks. Also slept in the cold. That's a good point. I should actually... Let's, um, let's vent across these, and we'll just put one heater. I mean, we're about to go into warmer... Yeah, actually, it's nice and toasty outside. Um, what I'll do is I'll forbid this heater. We will enable this heater even before we actually use this room, because this heater will heat Berg's room while this little... This is going to be the prisoner room later on. I can see why Berg isn't happy with it, but we'll do. Um, these are all pretty good quality beds. I could consider trashing the normal bed and then trying another build attempt, especially if Fob is the one to do it, because we might end up higher quality, but it's okay. Berg, actually, why don't you switch to this bed here? There you go. So now you'll sleep in the excellent bed. This guy's got a work frenzy, so they're going to work faster. That's nice. I should, you know, I should rename Sky. Rename, rename Sky to Daisy. Have I made that joke already? And I don't want to explain the joke because it's a spoiler for things. For particular things. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, damn it. Quill, keep your mouth shut. Don't spoil awesome things. Although at this point, if you haven't watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., what's wrong with you? Seriously, you deserve to get spoiled. Such a good show. I recognize the first season can be a little tricky to, to get through at first for some people because it's a little... The first season of um, Agents Shield is very similar to the first season of Supernatural. They're sort of getting a little bit established in the lore. The episodes are a little Monster of the Weeky, and you're not sure, like, like what, what's the deal? Why, why do people keep kind of raving about these shows? I don't quite get it yet. I mean, so, sometimes people will be like, well, I'm enjoying it right away. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, up, it's my bag. But, you know, you might still be like, not get why people rave about it. And then things change. And then you're like, oh, now I get it. But it is hard to, like, sell something to people where you're like, listen, you might not love it immediately. <laughs> like, wait, what? Why would I Why would I bother? I, time is precious. But don't skip any episodes of Supernatural or... Uh, I guess you could skip bugs. No, you can't skip bugs. You have, you have to live through it like everyone else did. <laughs> Skipping episodes bad. I tried to do that once with someone with um, with Buffy as well, because Buffy kind of has that same sort of like. Well, the first season is definitely weaker, but you can't you can't skip it. Even though the second season, to me, I, I I will say the second season like. I was gonna say isn't the best season of Buffy. Now don't take that to mean that's a bad season. The second season of Buffy is excellent. It's just that the 
third season is better, and maybe the fifth season is the best? It, it's it's kind of hard to pin down exactly. To me, the second season of Buffy isn't necessarily the best because there are two under other candidates for the best. But to me, the second season of Buffy is the most Buffy season. To me, when I think of, like, what Buffy is, what the vibe of Buffy is, second season covers all of that. Anyway, we got our vents over here, so these rooms will share their temperature now. Um, oh, yeah, it is. Okay, it's not... Oh, maybe I was mousing over the wrong thing and I was seeing 21s. Yeah, okay. I guess we do still need this. So we're going to turn on a heater here. First of all, being proper temperature will increase the speed at which we research. Um, I don't think it'll be represented here. So here you can see now where we were, what, like 60% research rate or something like that. We are now up to 107% research rate because of room cleanliness, which will just get better as we get more of these sterile tiles. Um, but I believe the work rate... Um, of the actual pawn gets debuffed if the temperature isn't right, if it's too hot or too cold. So we are going to use this to keep the room warm enough. And also people get unhappy if they slept in the cold. So this will make sure that Berg stays happy. So this is going to be fine. This one heater is going to be able to cover this entire block of buildings, which is going to be a-okay. All right, Darcy's staying busy with a little cleaning, which is nice. Let's take a look at the wildlife. No horses, no dromedaries. We still don't need hunting. We got tons of meat kicking around. Paolo is going to be busy making um, fine meals right now because we do have a combination of both meat and vegetables. And yeah, if we have a little bit of marble around, we do have a little bit. I could work on a little bit more flooring, like the just the pathing here, but I'm going to wait on it for now. Doo -doo -doo. So, okay, it is not auto chopping, maybe because it's not grown enough to get wood. I think there were some more trees in here, so maybe it only auto chops when it reaches a certain range. It'll be interesting to see that. Because I don't know if this growing area is going to prevent trees in general. Because, yeah, you don't want trees because you don't want people to come through here and get behind a tree and use it for cover. Not that a tree is fantastic cover. I wonder if I put a trap right next to the tree. They'll, they'll run to it for cover and then hit the trap. <laughs> that never occurred to me. That's kind of funny. Let's take another look over here. 109. There you go. Finished the last couple of sterile tiles, and there were 109, and assuming this room is kept clean regularly, which should mostly happen, because because we're walking, we're not walking on dirt over here. Unless this entire path was dirty from people walking on it already, we shouldn't tr bring any dirt into this room, so the cleanliness factor should be pretty good most of the time, uh, which is good, because yeah, if it becomes unclean, then we don't research quite as quickly. And we are starting to get more expensive research. <gasps> Bulk goods trader, yes, please. I hope we have enough to sell to you. Because you're going to have some stuff we definitely are going to want here. We could even sell some of our cattle. Or some of the meat we've got kicking around. You know what? Let me smaller stacks of meat. Let's just clean this up a scooch. So Bulk's goods trader, oh, doesn't have components. Mm, maybe because you're from a primitive thing. But we can usually get steel, maybe plasteel. Actually, are you just selling gold? Because these are my components. I can't buy any. Oh, shit. You're actually a lot less interesting than I'd hoped. Well, that's a shame. Okay, let me sell some of these leather stacks. Because other than maybe making sandbags, we don't have enough to like actually craft anything out of this. And it's just using up a bunch of space. I guess we're just going to trade things to you so that we can take your silver. Buy Mufflo Alpaca. Don't care about that. Huh. I'd like to get probably all your silver. I suppose we could sell more leather. Oh, there we go. More silver gives us more options for other merchants. And we can definitely get more leather whenever we want by just hunting some more. Which I might want to do, because right now we can't cloth anything. Although we still have tons of meat sitting around. Although a lot of it will get turned into other things. You know what? I think we can turn on some hunting. I wonder how hard it is to hunt gazelles. Let's just do the ibexes for now. Ibex? I think people pronounce it different ways. Sorry if whatever like coin flip I chose offends you in particular. Always a problem with these videos. Different accents, different things. And sometimes le legitimately just getting it wrong. And it feels like an Ibex would be one of those words that probably 
gets pronounced differently, especially since it's not, you know, presumably not a native English word. Okay, Berg, we'll upgrade you to a chain shotgun. Excellent. Hello. So you got the poor short bow. Tell you what, let's go and equip the auto pistol for you. That's probably an upgrade over the bow. The bows actually aren't bad. Um, especially I think the great bows actually have pretty good range and good damage. Um, they don't have a very high fire rate, but they can actually be kind of beastly. Speaking of beasts, Darcy dragging some animals in here. It's funny when they carry a whole rhinoceros or elephant. <laughs> like, try not to think about it. It would just be a pain in the butt to program something where, like, you got a bunch of people out to haul things, like, simultaneously. Oh, Paolo just leveled up their cooking. That's lovely. I don't think Vanilla used to actually have the little thing for level ups. Because don't I run a mod for level ups? Maybe the mod just changes so there's an alert up here. But I feel like Vanilla may have never shown it at all. This old gunshot, it's nice that it's not actually lowering any of our stats. That's interesting. Huh. It does say that lowering the torso effectiveness, but it's not changing any of the statistics. I wonder why that is. Does torso not generate any stat by itself? Like, if you have a wound in your leg, you'll, your movement speed will be lower. In your arm, it'll be a manipulation debuff. Eyes and head wounds are pretty bad. Oh, power going negative. Makes sense. Going into evening with no wind. We do have a lot of battery stuff charged up. And we do have the geothermal tech. Just trying to hold off a little bit because it's very materially expensive to build. And I feel like our power situation is probably okay right now. This bench does use 250 watts, and we've got some more lights in here. I think these lamps used to be 100 watts. They used to be so expensive. But yeah, I guess they changed from uh, incandescent to fluorescence. If we could do LEDs, these would be what? Like, is it like an 18 watt LED is the equivalent of 100 watt incandescent? Somewhere around there. Might take more components to build. I don't know. No, that, that doesn't actually... They don't do that. Um, it is funny, this one little growing area here, but it is preventing some trees from growing, so sure, why not? Now, I'm not generating any hay. I might want to so that we have kibble. Like, luckily, we do have winter, but it's not so much that it hoses this production. But I actually kind of think, you know what? Let's do a little bit of hay. Um, now, you can make kibble, I think... Any vegetable product. Actually, we should have a little growing zone over here because it doesn't cover anything. And oh, there's a tree here. So I didn't realize we're not getting full power to this one. I believe any vegetable product plus meat can be used to make kibble. Um, I don't think you have to use hay, but the nice thing is you can use hay and hay gives you a lot of bang for your buck. So if we go to our butchering table here, and we add a bill to make kibble. If we take a look at it. So yeah, one and one. And it's not very well listed here. But yeah, see, raw meat and plants. So we do have to use raw meat. But what I could do is say something like, listen. Okay. Meat, animal products, hay. Do forever. So basically, this is going to do it until we run out of hay. And then what I could do is put a second job after that. Which uses up anything, right? even any vegetable matter but here we can put a limit do until you have x and say something like i mean 100 kibble isn't much but let's say we do this so even if we have to use something other than hay we'll still produce a little bit of kibble so it's going to try hay first so a lot of times that second job that second kibble job won't happen at all because we'll have more than 100 kibble just from the hay Ooh, we got a oh a boomalope came through yeah let me recruit and unrecruit everyone to cause them to reprioritize their jobs Put this out. Some of our traps are going down. There you go. All right, that was a little awkward. Yep, that, that's going to happen with boomalopes from time to time. Um, you know, it, we could consider... So these are going to have to be repaired anyway. Let me deconstruct all these walls. We might do more, but let's deconstruct those and replace them with limestone. It is nice that we have two constructors. Yeah, Berg's still not great at it, but it'll be okay. All right, now there's no tree anymore, but no wind. So I'm happy we get the third battery. I think that's doing really good work for us. People can walk through here. It's just very slow. It used to be that a lot of these, like, a lot of the furniture and things like that, your pawns couldn't walk through before. 
um, which made it kind of awkward. They didn't count as walls, but your people couldn't walk through them. And at some point, I don't know what patch, but at some point they're like, you know what? We'll let the pawns walk through them. They'll just be really slow. So you don't want your people to walk through those things, but it stopped you from like accidentally blocking things off in really awkward ways. There's still a few things that sort of count as walls. Um, the Nutrient Paste Dispenser explicitly counts as walls. So you can't walk through it, but it can be used to wall off rooms, which is excellent. So yeah, rebuild that with that material. I mean, it'll be a little tougher, especially as we get in gunfights, because we might just blow through these wooden walls. We might want to double wall some of this as well, but I'm not worried about it right now. There's a great mod called Replace Stuff, because right now, if I want to build more limestone over here, I can't, because there's already something there. The replace stuff mod lets you just drag over here, and what it'll do, it'll deconstruct and rebuild the new wall out of the new material. Just saves a few clicks. It doesn't change the gameplay. It just saves you some clicks, which I always like. I, I want to bring up some of these mods as we play here, not to sell the importance of mods, but just, to, you know, for people who are new and not sure what mods to get. Well, maybe that's a feature you'd like, so there's a name that you can look for. Replace stuff. <gasps> we got a blight. I think that's our first blight. So, yeah, that is really annoying. So, these plants are dead, and that blight will spread if we don't do something about it. So, we have to do a cut plants here. And we have to get rid of those immediately. Now, I might want to make sure... You know what? Yeah, I'm going to go and put cut plants as a number one for everyone. I'm going to reset. I just need to make sure this happens right away before it spreads. I think I'm probably panicking a little too much. But, yeah, let's just make sure that we get rid of this. Mostly, it's less about panic and more about, I don't want to, uh, like, forget about this and, like, oh, see, it did spread there, actually. I want to watch and babysit it, so I want to make sure things happen as quickly as possible while I'm watching and babysitting. All right, let's do that. I think we had some plant cut up for someone else, too, but there you go. All right, so we'll try to replant some of this cotton. It's a little bit annoying. Oh, do we not have a, do we not have enough skill for Devil Strand yet? What's your plant skill, honey? It's a seven. Right, you don't have passion for it. Because I think the Devil's Strand only needs an 8. Oh, it needs a 10. Okay, so yeah, we're a million miles away from starting that. So we're not really taking advantage of this uh, rich tile terrain over here, but I guess it's okay. So we don't have anyone with plant passion. That is a shame. Because, yeah, I think we talked about this before. The second we do, we take Honey off the plant duty. We have her focus entirely on crafting, which is going to make her much happier and utilize her, you know, her passion. For, like, the passion will make her happier, and the passion will also mean she'll learn the skills faster. Really want a specialized person. So yeah, we want one person to join us who's got passion for plant would be great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining about Berg's passion for construction. A second constructor is really handy. Especially since Berg can stay busy in a few other ways as well. Okay, halfway to researching the multi-analyzer. Again, won't do anything for us as is. Other than enabling more research and making us research faster. Ooh. Okay, I wish we knew what LeBray's deal was. Their, their background is Mailman, which doesn't tell me anything, unfortunately. So there's a prisoner that's being held under armed guard. Rescue him, he'll join your colony. 39 years old. So not so old that they're likely to have a ton of diseases. Enemy outpost, four tribes people. We know the tribes people are fairly easy, and there may be an unknown threat. So what will happen is as we walk through the map, suddenly it might be like, oh, more tribes people just suddenly spawned. Or it could be something like manhunting animals or even mechs or something. I'm not too worried. I think this is probably going to be okay. I think I would like to do this. Where's my timer? Okay. We can get this started now. Everyone's just basically woken up. I think we're going to want to send a good number of people. Do I send everyone except Honey, who's a pacifist? That will leave the base a little bit undefended. Maybe I'll leave Palo behind just because they don't have much of a good gun right now. Okay, let's form a caravan. Let's try this. Okay. Um, I don't think we need any pack animals. Half a day of travel. Just some fine meals, a bunch of medicine. We only have three bedrolls, so some people will potentially sleep on the ground. I guess on the return trip, but that's going to have to be okay. All right, let's do it. Yeah, we're not bringing a lot of food with us, but it's okay. Oh, see, this is bad. Someone just dropped something over here. Hello, prioritize hauling this, because this is leaving this door open, which means the ability to bypass these extra things. You got to watch out for people dropping things in a door and jamming them open. All right, off they go. 
Oh, yeah, Palo will just keep cooking here. All right. I'm a little, oh, I'm, I'm nervous. But we do have some body armor, which is good. We have some decent weapons, short range combat mostly. Although one person has the um, the bolt action rifle, so they can snipe a little further away. They might We might be able to use that to initiate the combat and draw people to us. If we can set up a defensive thing, that's great. We could consider selling some of these fine meals. We do have a lot of them. Oh, I, our freezers, in, oh. Yeah, we clearly need, it's not even a heat wave. But right now we're alternating between frozen and refrigerated. We need a second cooler to be able to maintain this, which will mean more power usage as well. I mean, this is gonna have to wait until our constructors are back, Fob or Berg, to build this. Ideally, we'd have Fob do it because again, less chance of a botch and wasting some components. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad temperature, although we have so much in here that some of it might rot just because it's been around forever. 38 days, 19 days, yeah. That is not ideal. Okay, we're not gonna be gone very long. Oh God, I hope this goes well. It'd be a good place to like make a save and save scum. But we'll just we'll just try to go through it and see what happens. And I'm not too worried about tribals. We are relatively well armored and we are gonna blow them up real fast with our weapons. Speaking of weapons, another chain shotgun. All right, and that's just been the, uh, the I just said make five. go that is done oh i think we already had one right oh no sometimes i've got a survival rifle so i might want to ask for one more to be made that way everyone's gonna have one. Oh, are they camping yeah they're resting here which is okay i mean yes two of them won't have the bed rolls so they'll be a little bit uncomfortable but no one will be tired going into the fight which actually might be very helpful timing Yeah, I could keep a spare gun around, but I don't think so. With the clothing, I do like to do the thing where we keep one around because people do auto-equip them um, and auto-maintain their clothing. Uh, but the gun plays not the same, and the guns are a lot more expensive to build. Um, and they don't decay the same way. Like, the clothing gets, like, worn out over the course of the day um, just by itself. And, of course, if you get in a battle as well, it takes some damage, and then it can decay, like, it can lose a lot of hit points from just being shot at. Um, so I feel like the clothing is something that you kind of constantly, your pawns constantly cycle through, but luckily they auto equip it. So I like having the, just keep one of these around at all times. Whereas the guns it's much less. So it's more when someone else joins, then maybe we'll change things. Okay. We've arrived over here. There might be some extra bonus surprise, which I don't like the idea of. There's the prisoner. We're going to try to rescue. Let's first. Okay. Again, our shotguns are very short range. Now, they have some sandbags set up. Maybe I can engage from over here. Who's got the sniper rifle? Or not the sniper rifle, the bolt action rifle. Because you do have decent range. I might just park you up here. So Vort's going to park there. I'm going to grab the rest of them. Ooh, just keep it on normal speed here. Okay, yeah, they, have an, they will fire back. But at some point, they will properly aggro on us. There you go. Attacking our colonists. Hold on. Or get there. Yeah, still go there. Oops. No, just go here. Okay. Skunk should get taken out real fast. I'm going to put Vort here, actually, so we get a nice little flanking angle. Um, I don't believe your pawns will shoot each other as long as they're within three tiles. So they can shoot over each other's heads as long as they're close-ish. But I will move Berg back here just to lower the chance they get shot at. Vort doesn't actually have an attack angle here. Now they are fleeing their own base. Move over here if you can. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to claim everything, so that way we can walk into these places. Um, Fob, I'm going to recruit you and just push you into this room. And here, because we want some vision in here. If we were able to down them, we might be able to get a prisoner, but it's not going to happen. Okay, we're just going to pop open all these rooms. Okay. Free prisoner. Oh, 
Okay. Oh. Oh, we got some flu back home. All right. But Lebray did join us. I'm also going to... I don't know if I need to do this. But we're going to unforbid all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to head home. So if I click here, we can reform the caravan. Tell you to go home. Accept. So bring everyone, including Lebray. And we could bring some dead bodies. These knives have some value. Yeah, a lot of these weapons have some value. And they're not going to be too heavy. It is going to slow us down a bit, but not by much. Um, this tainted clothes has no real value. We could bring some urns with us because they're kind of pretty. Some of them, they'll have to be rebuilt. Okay, travel time hasn't moved. Awful normal. Yeah, let's not bother with that. But, you know, if there was steel or plastic steel or components around, we'd want to grab those. Check the travel supplies. We'll bring this pemmican. Um, I don't I don't think it's worth bringing these meats. Some of it will rot. Some of it won't, but it's not very valuable. Um, a Devil's Strand bedroll. We will grab that, though. That Wow, that slowed us down a lot for the extra 2.5k. So I think this is okay. Go back home, lovely, and we'll have a new person. We're gonna take a look at their work ability once they get here. Okay, um, if your animals do get sick, it is important they have sleep spots. If you don't have sleep spots for your animals, they cannot be tended. Your animals don't really care if they sleep in the sleep spot or on the ground, but I think if they just fall asleep on the ground, they won't get treated for diseases. Okay, this doesn't happen very often. We did get ambushed on the way home. It's a single outlander. They want one of our uh, uh, flak helmets. Honestly, wouldn't be the end of the world to give this up, but it's only one. We are going to fight. Now, Labre doesn't have any weapons. Okay, where are we on the map here? Okay, we're over there. And there's the Outlander cat. Are those Molotovs? Oh, that's a little bit scary. Too smart, abrasive, jealous. Wow, we wouldn't even want to capture you. Okay, we're going to move forward with everyone. We're going to space them out a little bit, though. Because we really want to reduce the chance that we get multiple people Molotoved. Oh, headshot's good. Just trying to watch for when this person is going to decide to throw. Okay, good. Excellent. Again, I don't know if I need to unforbid everything. But I will. Grab this. Reform caravan. Send you over here. Accept. Don't need to bring the person. We'll grab the Molotovs, though. And these are all tainted. I mean, the flak vest is worth a little bit of cash, but I'm not going to bother with it. Oh, that's, yeah, right. These simple meals. Done. Okay. That worked out nicely. Hopefully you'll get home soon. Without another ambush. I think you'll be fine, though. Okay, this is at least frozen. Just slightly cooler outside. Maybe, maybe we're not going through some of these doors. Off. I don't know. Looks like we're still going through the doors here. Because it was 26, and I think we're having a problem. 25 seems fine. But yeah, if we get another heat wave... Well, if we get a heat wave, we'll probably need a third cooler. But seems like a good idea to build that second one. That's going to be all right. Okay. Yeah, they still got a half a day before they get there. These uh, The rocky terrain and lack of roads certainly slows things down a lot. I often like to set up my uh, towns near a road because it really improves the travel time. Okay, you got that. Stuff's outside. Honey, oh, you're treating our animals. That's good. Got to take care of them. 33 components. That's a big number. Oh, we do need more steel soon, so I guess we'll go ahead and mine some steel. Um, I'm going to mine this. I'm going to have to take a look at things soon to try to maybe... Well, an insect infestation outside of her base is fine, I guess. You really want to be careful about when you build your base inside the mountain. Insect infestations. That's anywhere under an overhead mountain. You can get that, and they can be really difficult to deal with inside your base just because you don't have a kill zone set up. Insects are kind of tough. But yeah, I guess outside isn't the worst. I don't know if infe uh, insect infestation is something that can roll instead of a raid. In which case, th it's not the end of the world. As long as it's not inside your base. I just... I hate them so much. I used to just turn them off. Um, you can... You can prevent them from spawning if you have, like, an actual construction there. Like a wall, for example. Um, but that's it. I, these days, I'm playing with a mod that makes it so when you floor an area, an insect infestation can't pop out of there. And that feels pretty good to me. 
there's still a cost of material and time to prevent it from happening. Oh, we can mine all this too. Although this might be a good place to make sure we don't actually get an insect infestation. Because that would be that'd be a little scary. Not the end of the world, because we can engage them from far. Insects are just melee things. So the big thing is you want to engage the insects from afar. Which, I guess to a certain extent, my chain shotguns won't really be good for that. But they do good good damage. Some of the insects are a little bit armored, but it's not... I don't think it's heavy, heavy like the mechs. Okay, people have arrived. So let's actually take a look at Le Bray finally. No health problems. Iron Will is great. Now, Pessimist... So... Lebray here will always have a mood debuff, but Iron Will dramatically improves the break threshold. So even though Lebray's mood will be generally lower, it has to be super low for Lebray to have a, a mental break. So these kind of cancel each other out. And in fact, I think we come out ahead because of Iron Will, I think is a much, much better here. They're also nimble, so they're quite good at dodging in melee. Um, and actually, they've got double passion for melee, but I think we will try to get Lebray a gun here. In fact, let me make sure... I put in an order for yet another chain gun. Please and thank you. Crafting, artistic. Yeah, well, I would really like to get honey to work on crafting. But realistically, Le Bray is going to have to work on crafting for us right now. Now, they're not terribly good at it. It would be great if we could have them skill up on just craft rather than some of these other things. But in practice, yeah, you'll have to do these other things. I could consider having Lebray's haul above their craft. Just so that we have someone who's kind of a dedicated hauler, but I think we'll just set this and call that the way we go. Oh, right, we brought these extra urns. Um, you know what we should do is we should decorate our dining room. Now, these are damaged. Once they get installed, they will be repaired. There you go. The dining room is currently slightly impressive. It should get a lot better once the urns get installed. There we go. Temperature set up. We just have to make sure to adjust the freezer over here. So there we go. So this, okay, it went warm because we actually popped open the freezer when we tore down that wall. But it is now cooling and should have no problem stay frozen right now, barring an actual heat wave. That was a very successful little raid and rescue. We still don't have a plant expert. So honey's got to keep working on it. It would be great if we did, because we would like to get up to Devil's Grand. And yeah, Honey only gets one-third normal experience because of a lack of passion. But, what can you do, huh? Yeah, that tree's definitely still there. I think these trees will get auto-chopped. But maybe only when they're fully grown. Maybe that's it. Fully grown trees will get auto-chopped in this... Hmm. So it's not going to prevent them from getting cover as is. What you can do is you can floor these areas, and obviously things won't come up. I don't want to floor it now, because I'd prefer not to lose the Ambrosia. But yeah, it might be a good idea for me to just go and say this. So this doesn't even say chop wood, it says cut plant, because we will get nothing out of this. Here we'll get some wood out of this oak tree, just not a huge amount. One of the nice things, though, is with the guns being on the side here, right? Even if they go here and get cover from me, they won't have cover from the guns. So it's not the end of the world. But I think I'll keep, still keep it trimmed. Okay, so LeBray's going to sleep in there. We got a mad squirrel. I want to put a cut in here, but I want to deal with the mad squirrel first. Are you just going to chill over there in an annoying way? You are. Oh, that one's asleep right now. I could just forbid this door to prevent people from walking out here. Maybe I'll just do that for now. Oh, boy. A psychic ship. Well, we're going to have to deal with this one next time. This is a whole slight degree of trickiness. Oh, I'm, I'm happy that this pikeman is currently on fire. Well, maybe they don't take damage. Can the pikeman not burn? Huh. All right. Well, we're going to have to deal with the psychic trip next time. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.